are so bright Pull your hat down, make sure your cinch is tight Horse is kinda snuffy, cold chill up your spine You'll get your ass moving some more burning daylight Kinley and we're burning daylight. <laughs> well, howdy there, daylight burners. How's it going? It's been a minute since I... I broke out like the the old school set, you know. I I did stray thoughts here the other day with my AirPods, and the the audio turned out meh. That's always the trouble. It's been the trouble since the get go was getting the audio right on on horseback. But anyhow, I wanted to do another another episode of Stray Thoughts, and uh, this one's going to be centered um kind of on books. I've uh. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it many a time on the show, but my my mother that raised me, she was a school librarian, so books were a big deal in our house. We uh, we didn't we had a TV, and at one point we had the local channels, um, kinda sometimes, and then our antenna got struck by lightning, and uh, that took out the local channels. But the TV was fine, and we still had a VCR, so we had a lot of movies, and we'd watch those, but. We had way more books than we ever had movies. A ton of books. Always books overflowing everywhere. We had, uh, I don't know how many bookcases we had, um, but they were all full. Every one of them. And uh, we'd uh, donate some books and get rid of some and then fill the shelves right back up. And we, we always had, and then my, my dad's desk was just a, a pile of newspapers and books and, and letters and papers. and <clears throat> Anyway, he... He liked, he liked the appearance of being studious, and he is pretty studious, but regardless, we've always, we always read a lot, and, um, these, uh, how in these, these day and age, the, these culture wars that everybody gets, uh, caught up in is, uh, is, gets to be pretty exhausting, and, you know, there's the... On one hand, you have on the conservative kind of side of things where you're, th- these people are grooming our kids. And I'd say there's pretty solid evidence to suggest that there's a lot of truth to that. And then you have on the liberal end of things, uh, people talking about how the, the Republicans just want to ban books. And uh, it's not a real... Oh... I wouldn't say it's a fair argument, but I wouldn't say it's not a. I'm not gonna say it's a invalid argument. There's there's some. I know some of the the, the hardcore Christian right wing people, and um, let's say they're they're not they're not against uh, some sort some forms of censorship, and and like i said there's uh there's arguments on both sides some are good some are not and uh it, it's kind of fascinating to watch it all play out and as far as uh as far as so like let's look at there's i i think i spoke about this uh you know in the in the very early days of my of the show it might have been a uh, a horseback episode, I can't recall, but we we were in Barnes and Noble there in Reno, and uh, the kids like to go to Barnes and Noble. I like to go to Barnes and Noble. Um, <coughs> my mom's favorite bookstore was in Denver. It's called the Tattered Cover Bookstore, and it's uh, and it's a really pretty neat place. And uh, and I've always I've always enjoyed a good bookstore, and um, there was this whole section of like these really weird lefty progressive children's books like uh <clears throat> anti-racist baby uh feminist baby um whatever other you know 
trans ally baby i don't i don't know if that's a thing but i wouldn't be surprised if it was and it just like um okay but they're they're a, they're a baby i mean uh you know it's it's a baby they don't they don't know shit so it's hard to call them racist or feminist or the, i mean baby is just a pretty good term for it all in general but um it just it seems odd to to want to like push that on on your kids and and that's kind of the you know and 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 wrong uh, yeah i I'd, I'd say i'd lean towards that it's probably wrong um however i it's uh it's not my kids so um anyways I, it's uh, it's a strange thing, and then on the conservative side, you know, the the guys that supposedly love the free market, uh, instead of just writing better children's content, which some people have. I mean, <laughs> there are there have been some really good, you know, alternatives to to kind of the the secular media. There's uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a very my mom was very southern baptist christian lady she was uh staunchly staunchly religious and we didn't i mean we we did some mainstream stuff but not a whole lot <clears throat> but there, there i mean there was like veggie tales and stuff growing up there was a lot of a lot of christian rock bands that were pretty pretty good and um but more often than not the conservative side of things rather than to to come up with better stuff is they uh they bitch about the the other stuff and and try to somewhat get it banned. So whether it's from the classrooms, which some of that I agree with, it doesn't fit the curriculum. And I think age appropriate's a, a good <laughs> you know kind of a good way to go about things when when it comes to discussing any of this you know crazier stuff when it comes to gender and sex and what the fuck ever else we got race and you know i think there's uh when when a kid can start to comprehend what all of this stuff means when we interact with people then it's yeah then it's good time to start kind of educating them on some of this stuff you don't have to promote any of it but you can educate on what it is and then i think that's a the more you know the better equipped you are to deal with certain situations uh you know <clears throat> it's uh i i guess a lot of times most of the time i think it's better to know it than not know it and so uh it's kind of kind of one of the reasons i'm anti censorship um but anyway i i also get the it kind of it kind of goes to some of the the culture issues we have here in the, the rural community. We we get overlooked a lot of times unless we're uh, being you know glorified in some Hollywood movie that's not at all about what we the life we live and whatnot. <clears throat> but uh. I don't know. It, it's just uh, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird struggle. We want we want people to tell a good story about us, um, or not tell it at all. And it's uh, so I don't know. It, it's it's kind of like the the Yellowstone backlash. It's uh, you know a lot of a lot of ranchers and people in the rural community they they don't like the show because it's too Hollywood and that's not how. We live our lives, and we're like, well, of course it's not. It's not telling. Uh, it's not a reenactment, you know, of uh, rural life. It's a. It's a fictional series. Um, from you know, wrote by Hollywood people. Um, but also it does a pretty decent job of incorporating some of this, the day-to-day -day stuff that a rancher cowboy might. Uh, might come across during their during their day you know so it's uh 
it's hard to it's hard to call it a bad thing let's say and anyhow it's it's one of those things where like if we if you start pulling certain books out of the library completely um what what's it gonna be to where you know does that does that lead to having uh say books some of the the old cowboy books that we love the best um you know say let they pull lonesome dove uh out of some libraries because it's uh it's got too much racist racist imagery or whatever and uh <clears throat> too much you know, you know colonialism and, and white supremacy and it's just not it's not fit for our you know our children to to read uh when you know, it's when 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 does that happen? And and I, that that's always uh, it's always the slippery slope argument, and then there's a, the real argument to it. So it's how how these things get played out by law. I don't know how I f- how to how to really go about that. I'm not a lawmaker, but when it comes to whether we should we get rid of them or should we not, I tend to I tend to lean on the side of not get rid of it you can put warnings you can put labels whatever i don't know i just i think uh censorship leads to more censorship and uh it all depends on who's making the decision of what is what is harmful and what isn't and uh as we know that that varies quite greatly from from place to place so anyways it's uh Back to books. I, I think, I think also in today's day and age, uh, people get they get so involved in this back and forth on on uh, social media and, uh, and having the you know the arguments and owning the libs or trolling the maggots or however whatever the people are calling the other side nowadays and and it's gonna increase um, here coming up. We got. Well, we're not far out from an election, so that shit's going to increase. But I, uh, it's good to tune that shit out a lot, <laughs> tune as much of it out as you can. If it's uh, if it's not making your day better, it's probably probably just get rid of it. Go read a book, uh, you know, put on an audio book or something, and you know, then then you can you can just it's a good way to. It's a good way to use your mind in a different way. Focus on the book and what the writer's saying. And if it's if they're trying to paint a picture, try to paint that picture with your mind. It's uh, it's relaxing. It's calming. And uh, you know, you learn stuff. You learn you learn cool stuff. You learn about different cultures. Um, I'm in the middle of The Lost Cowboy by uh, Jake Zilke, who I had on the podcast earlier, and I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's uh, you know, it's fairly, I mean, it's not a short book, it's like 400 pages, uh, but it's a really easy read, uh, it's very, he's got a really, really good writing style, and, uh, he's good at telling a story, I'm, <clears throat> I was, uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with it, so, uh, like I said, I'm only about halfway through, uh, and, uh, but I, I think I'm gonna make that my, my June book, and if anybody wants to, to join me on, in reading that, uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna, one of the perks I'm going to start doing on uh, Patreon is kind of try to revive the old Burning Daylight book club. I think uh, I think it's a good idea, and I wasn't I wasn't for sure how to how to set it up back then, and I, I don't know if this will work either. But I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna try to do you know one book of the month, and uh, if you want to follow along with me, we can uh, we can do a discussion, and then on some of them. I've I've had several authors on the on the show, and uh, I bet I could get most of them, if not all of them, back on, and maybe we could do a Q and A with uh, with the author about their book uh, for for the Patreon members, and uh, and I think that'd be really cool. So I think Dominic Pasiga, the history professor from Chicago, I know I could get him back on, and. Uh, and I think uh, I think his book Slaughterhouse is, is going to be maybe that'll be the July uh, 
the July book. Uh, we'll see on on how that goes. But I I think that's a great book, and a lot of people in the ag industry should uh, should read it. Give you a better understanding of how how we got to where the the cattle market is today, which is uh, you know it's a lot has changed, but a lot of the same old game is still still around. And uh, anyway, Dominic has does a good job telling that story of how we how we got to where we are and so anyway i i think uh i think i'll see if i can get jake back on to do a q a and uh but he's uh i know he's been on the podcast circuit a lot here lately so we'll see uh we may just do uh just a discussion of it uh from from anybody who's read it so um, I'm going to, I'm going to plan that towards the, the end of June. We'll, uh, we'll try to, we'll try to do one of those for, for the Lost Cowboy. So anyways, it's, um, it's always, it's always good to have, uh, have a good book that you're reading. I've got about, I posted that picture on my Instagram the other day of my, my bookshelf out in the studio. And that's just, that's just books I've collected over the past, uh, two three years uh we've got a lot more in uh, the house and then i've i've lost and or stored or misplaced uh hundreds of books over the years too so it's it's uh that's that's one of the shitty things about being a lover of books when you is when you move you gotta you gotta lug them all with you and they they take up space but I'd way rather have them than not have them, and if uh, <coughs> if you simply can't move with them, don't don't just toss them away. Donate them somewhere, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it's amazing what uh, it's amazing what you can learn from books, and it's amazing like what the printing press how how profound of a transformation that was on uh, on the world. Because just uh, all of a sudden you could you could replicate all the all the text and the the, the historical accounts and the and the religious uh, doctrine and <clears throat> and uh, the, you know the the Bible and all of it. And it was now you could uh, you could replicate it pretty quickly compared to you know just transcribing it by hand and. <clears throat> if books are taken care of, they are, you know, they last a long time. There's some old, 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 old books in, in libraries across the world, and it, it's, uh, once it's down on paper, you know, it's, it's kind of there in the ether in some way or f- shape or form forever. That was very rude, Clara. Having a profound thought about literature and you had to stop and piss down your leg right in the middle of that it was it was very unladylike uncouth having a refined dignified conversation here and you had to go and put your dirty whore stamp on it it's no wonder you're the reason reason this society's falling apart pissing down your leg while I'm trying to talk about books Anyway, maybe that's that was her way of saying, "Hey, let's wrap this thing up, amigo." Probably so. Um, anyhow, it was uh, it was just kind of a thought I had. Um, you know, I was kind of I was kind of marveling at my book collection the other day, and uh, and it was also one of the most interacted with posts that I that I've had here recently, where I got a it got quite a few likes, but I had a whole bunch of comments and discussion, you know. And now, now so I've added, I've added books to my to my list that I got to go read. And um, <laughs> it was, uh, oh, uh, the history teacher where my wife teaches. Uh, he was telling her the other day, and it kind of fucked me up for a minute. But uh, he's he's like, uh, I just realized the other day that I'm never going to be able to read all the books that I want to read. And I was like, fuck. He's right. Damn. And uh, you could dwell on that and just be like, fuck, I'll never get them read. But the more time you spend dwelling on that, the less time you, 
it's been reading the ones that you can get read and uh yeah, I'll never read all the books that I want to read, but I don't know. I I just wonder I wonder how many of them I'll have started but never finished by the time by the time it's all runs out. And uh, I'm I'm getting a little closer every day at finishing the ones that I've started, whether it be on, on audio or or in print. And uh, I don't know. There'll be a bunch that I that I know I never read and I always wished I had. But in the meantime, the, for each one I scratch off the list, whether it be you know something that that that's done in research for the podcast or something like uh, like a spy novel. It's just for for sheer entertainment. That's kind of my go-to. Like if I. I'm just kind of tired about everything. Tired, tired of listening to politics, or tired of some, uh, you know, just not in the mood for for comedy or something. I just kind of want to turn my brain off. It's either a historical fiction or a spy novel. And uh, Jack Carr just came out with his his latest James Reese novel, and it was it was really freaking good. And uh, got to I was discussing spy novels with. Uh, my buddy Jake the other day, not not the not the author Jake, but uh, college buddy Jake. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of the same interest in books, and yeah, I'll I'll fuck up a spy novel. I'll I'll, I'll blow through that real quick. So anyway, you get uh, instead of instead of getting all bent out of shape over the latest trans bullshit, uh, turn it out, turn it off. Go pick up a book and like go go pick up a Will James or a Louis L'Amour. Uh, if you're not into spy novels or, or or historical fiction or whatever, if you you just want Western books, go go read the, the Last Buckaroo by <coughs> by Mackie Hedges. You know, uh, go go read Branded by John Arm or or Jar of Pennies by uh, what's his name John Yearwood or uh, the the Pig Book. That was that was a wild read too. I mean, just there's go read something, take your mind off all the bullshit. Maybe learn something while you're at it. So, anyways, if, uh, if you think this the book club uh, deal would be be something you're interested in, as always, go to Patreon.com/slash Burning Daylight and uh, you can sign up there, starting at five bucks a month. You also get a bunch of bonus content. Uh, try to do one each episode. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but uh, you also get uh, my conversations with Boots. And, um, yeah, now we'll do this book club deal. So, anyways, um, thanks for listening. Hope you all have a good week. We'll, uh, we'll round out the week with uh, Spence Post Politics. Aaron and Rob will be back recording that tonight so anyways uh thanks for tuning in and uh move your ass we're burning daylight Tell the 
the job done right.